Hi, welcome to another episode of Analyze This. My name is Honey Ogunde, and today with me is my co-host, economist, and sometimes rapper, Tunji Andrews. So today we're going to be talking about a topic that's really passionate about, which is entrepreneurship. And it's basically, is entrepreneurship for everyone? We hear about the glitz, the glamour, the press, the PR, it seems as if everyone is doing it. So should we all be getting in on the game? I'll be sharing my experiences as an entrepreneur, uh, trying to build my business fashba, as well as talking about some of the grits and the not so nice things about, you know, what that journey has been like, as well as talking about the don'ts and what you should look out for if you're really interested in being an entrepreneur. So it seems as if everyone is talking about entrepreneurship, but let's break it down to you. What is really entrepreneurship? What does it mean? I think um, the word that comes to my mind when I think of entrepreneurship is hustle. Yeah. I mean, hustle, a little bit of suffering, you know, sprinkled with... A little bit of suffering, like a yeah, lot of suffering. Yeah, yeah then, then sprinkled with some success, you know, yes. and, and glory. But it, it's, it's the hustle. It's, it's hard, it's grit, it's tears, it's more tears, it's some hunger, some, you know, lonely days. It's a lot of work. Mm. So, and, and I tell people, if you're not ready for it, don't, don't jump into it. Yeah, I know. Entrepreneurship can feel really tough. I remember before I started my business, Fashba, people were telling me that it's going to be tough. But I just kind of feel like... You know, yours would be I'm different. I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's you. I know, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I've already worked before. This mm -hmm. thing, you know, it's going to be slam dunk. I got into it. I was like, huh? My eyes have seen red pepper and some. It's super tough, like, trying to build anything mm -hmm. around the world. But I think in Nigeria, it's even especially difficult. It's, I think entrepreneurship here is like more difficult just because there's so many other things that you have to power. there's no infrastructure you have to be your own you know power generator you have to finance yourself you have to train your staff basically you're trying to do everything while still trying to build something that people love engage with your you customers know, make sure your sales you are have coming to smile in despite what you're feeling on the inside it's crazy you know um i i do believe that um a lot of the entrepreneurs because i mean we must say that um the reason why we have a lot of entrepreneurs in Nigeria is not because we have the um, spirit to do it. It's more because there are no jobs and we just have to eat, right? Yeah. Um, but I disagree slightly with that. I think that Nigerians as a whole are largely entrepreneurial, right? So I think as, as a nature, a Nigerian is always trying to hustle. That's why you can get to China and see one Nigeria there and selling something. Or, no, I think it's the suffering is part, but the way that we flipped it is to it, make ourselves check entrepreneurial. Check it. All those guys that went to wherever they are, yeah. if here was really, really great, they'll come back. I mean, it's, 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 it's because there is there are no jobs, the, the situation is really dire for a lot of people. You know, for a lot of people, there are entrepreneurs who are accidental entrepreneurs, there are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who went to do it because they couldn't get a job. There's people like me. I wasn't really attracted to the entrepreneurial uh, journey or story. Both my parents are entrepreneurs, and I saw firsthand how difficult it could be. Mm -hmm. So my initial idea was just, let me just work in great companies and get experience and move up the ladder. I ended up in entrepreneurship and starting my company because I, there was a problem that I was I was facing and I couldn't see anybody solving it. So and I decided to go out. This was, I yeah. really felt compelled to go out and solve mm -hmm. it. And that's why I started Fashpa. But so there are people that come into entrepreneurship from different angles. Mm -hmm. Some come from, you know, trying yeah. to solve a problem. Yeah. Some are going to come from it from just they have no other choice. But now we're all in it. Yeah. Right. And then now it's like, what how a really, we, how do we, how, how do we, we come get out? around this? Yeah, right? I always say that being an entrepreneur in Nigeria sometimes can feel like you are by yourself on a boat and you're drowning and I, there's nothing you can do about oh, it. Oh, I'm telling you. And it's like when you're waving and calling, crying out for help, right? People yeah. think you're actually posing for a picture. Yeah, so they're, they're like, like hey! Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, or yeah. you can be like, it feels as if you are screaming and then no sound is even coming, coming out. out. They're like, and the person's like, okay, okay, I got you, yeah, I got you. I know, and I'm like, <laughs> but I mean, it's super, it, you know, it does feel like that. And what I'm really trying to describe there is the fact that it's lonely. It's lonely. It can feel like you're very much on your own. Yeah. There are circumstances, like, you know, when you're on a boat, there are things that are happening that you can't really control. So it can mm -hmm. be the economic tide that is pushing your boat like true, this. True, it can be true. your staff that are quitting, that are pushing your boat the other way. You know? it can be trying to raise money that is doing another thing to you. So sometimes you just but you know, like, you know, this is the thing, right, about entrepreneurship, which I know most entrepreneurs can't do without yeah. it's it's the a lot of them are risk takers yeah uh, they are adrenaline junkies they they like that you know it's not like they actually enjoy living on the edge but that living on the edge and you just scale through it somehow just gives a good feel good feeling i saw a video of a uh, uh, diddy um he's You're always watching all this hip-hop video because you are so cool diddy what was he doing yes diddy um he he had just he he had just sealed the deal and he was caught on camera 
you know, the excitement after. And you know, every entrepreneur knows this. You know that quick shuffle you do after you seal the deal? Like, oh, that is really what most entrepreneurs live for. If you're doing it because you want to make money, which of course you will make if the, uh, the enterprise is successful, but if that's why you're doing it, you will quit. Very quickly. But there's some good points to being an entrepreneur. Yes. I love that you can see an idea grow from something really small to and something yeah, like super huge. It, I, I love it feels like a baby and you're just growing exactly. the baby. But even like faster, like so you can really see something grow from just an idea to something true, really big. True. I think there's something about getting recognition, recognition especially for what you've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't sometimes happen in a company. So you might be building something and no one really gets to know about it. So mm -hmm. I think those are some of the good points. I think that the fact that you can you can build something that employs people. So you're contributing true. in the economy. You're training people mm -hmm. um, which you don't necessarily get to do if you're part of you know a business so there are some real positive aspects that I really personally enjoy about being an entrepreneur and for me it's also just that you can build something that maybe goes on to change the world like, true that's true. what entrepreneurship is about and I, I feel let this be at the bottom of your heart it's uh, just the same way you said you found a need yes and then you felt compelled to go yeah. out and fix it because it's it's I feel a lot of the time entrepreneurship finds us yeah. It's not the other way around. It, it finds us in what we're doing, our jobs, and then, you know, you just find this overwhelming need to, to, to fix something that is not being fixed, and then you go out and fix it. That, in fact, is, is the way you make money. So I think one of the points is that you can still be entrepreneurial within a, a nine-to-five. Nine to five. Yeah. You don't have to um, be going off to do your own thing and taking mm -hmm. on all the risk. You can work in a company. You might be the one starting either a new department, a new project, or a new company. That was one of the things that I did while I was still working. And, you know, working for 15 years, I really learned a lot about being an entrepreneur in a company. And that helped me, that experience helped me Transition. when it was time mm -hmm. exactly to run my own business. So those are some of the good points. But what are the negative points? I know you're the chief of that area. I've gone through a lot of um, difficult times as an entrepreneur. And I, I have done quite a few um, startups. And I feel that uh, quite a few of them also. So I've seen all the downsides. I've seen how you could, you know, plan in your mind that, okay, rent is eight months down the line. And let me just quickly put the money into this business right now. Before, before that time, this business, ah, I believe in it. It yeah. should have. And then you find out that two weeks at a time, the business is not even close. And then there's rent that is, you know, in front of you. Actually, that happened to me one time and I was kicked out of my apartment mm -hmm. and, you know, I had to start squatting with family. Yeah, so, I mean, entrepreneurs need to know that. I'm not saying it's going to happen to everybody, but know that it is a possibility yes. and be prepared before you go into it, you yes. know? Well, wow. let's go to the streets and find out what you guys think about um, entrepreneurship. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you thinking about uh, starting your, uh, start your business? Have you been doing it for a while? Let's, let's hear from you. Well, I don't think everybody has that zeal to own their own business. I don't think everybody is cut out for owning their own business, really. Beyond having um, a desire to own a business, I think the most important um, factor would be the, the competence to manage a business. And so some people might have the skill that is marketable, but then would not be um, able in themselves to manage the business. So I do not think um, everyone has the skill to be an entrepreneur. Uh, really, it is, it's a, entrepreneurship is done, I don't want to say in a two-sided way. I would say I agree and I disagree. I agree with it. What, uh, with the current situation the country is facing now. When you don't have a job, you, don't, you must get money to do something. So when you sit down, you just idea have to come for you to get money, to take care of yourself, your family, or do something. Then it's passion because when you are passionate about what you are doing, you want to do it with or without the money. Um, I think entrepreneurship is done mostly out of passion. Because people go to school and they try to learn whatever they teach them. By the end of the day, you realize that you just want to make more money. So most of the time, basically, we in Africa, Nigeria as a whole, we go into entrepreneurship mainly because we want to make extra money. But in terms of passion, let's say 40%, but 60% go into basically for the money. Trust me. Entrepreneurship is here to stay because if you look at the principles of entrepreneurship, it has to do with identifying challenges and seeing opportunities in those challenges and meeting those opportunities. And challenges will never go into extinction, you know. I do not think it's a phase. I think it's here to stay. 
because um, more young people and um, graduates see it as a veritable source of um, engagement. So I think it's here to stay. It's not a phase. And uh, for me, I think uh, this recession has really brought out more, um, have really brought out the entrepreneurship in most people. And even going back, because I know this is just a phase the country is going through. And once the country is through with this phase, everybody has discovered his or her own hidden talent and they will begin to explore in it. So I don't, it has really come to stay in Nigeria. I must say that. Yeah, entrepreneurship is really, really here to stay. Because um, 80%, if I'm allowed to form that percentage, I have one thing going on or the other. Is it that you're selling shoes or you're making shoes or you're doing hair? No, it's here to stay. If you look at if you look at the situation of Nigeria now, it's a situation about allowing people to depend on themselves, not to depend on government. Because if you see now there's no job everywhere, so people are trying to, you know, do something to make money for themselves. So it's something that will stay, not that will leave. If the government can create an enabling environment, a conducive environment, then it will stay. Almost everybody wants to become something. And you can only become something through entrepreneurship. As we've heard from you out there, everyone is on, on some kind of side hustle or some kind of hustle trying to make this Telling entrepreneurship you. work for them. So let's talk about it. What are the do's and the don'ts if you don't want to end up crying like Tunji once you started your business? Um, I think, first of all, you have to have passion. And, and I'm not just saying, you know, something that you heard, you know, you listen to one tape and then mm -hmm. you jump out the next morning. You really have to care about what you're doing because if you don't, you cannot succeed. And I'm not saying you might. I say you cannot succeed because um, entrepreneurship needs a certain level of insanity. Forgive me for the use of the word. That means that um, it's and it's what differentiates between that Rubicon world from failure to success. And for you to cross over it, you need some level of insanity where everybody's telling you, that is not going to work. It's going to fail. To don't go there. Stop. You know, don't do it. Don't travel there. But you still keep going and say, no, I must do this. I believe in it. It'll work. And when it finally works, you, you feel like you sound like a genius, right? Because everybody thought it wasn't going to work. But usually it takes you. You need to have that serious passion pushing you. Yeah. So do start something that you're really passionate about. Do try and solve a problem that you have, because chances are if you have the problem, mm -hmm. you other know people how it might have it themselves. Do have a plan. So make a business plan, have a financial plan, have a plan for how you think you're going to grow this business out. Also, I think it's really important to also think about if you don't have a mentor, get advisors, mm -hmm. put some kind of corporate governance into your business from the start. And that will really help you go a long way, right? I, I have issues with mentors. I, I, I didn't have a good experience with them. So I, I generally tend to worry about mentorship, especially in Nigerian context, because it kind of feels like okay. slavery. But yes, I agree with you having an advisory board. You know, people that are not really on the payroll of the business, but well, you can reach out you, to you for, yeah, for thoughts. You know, just business. talk to yeah. them, you know, and a lot of the time, don't burden them with your, don't burden them, just, you know, ease into the relationship. Exactly, ease into think, the relationship. The thing is always build relationships. Exactly. I think also when you're thinking about entrepreneurship, it's also about networks. A lot of things in Nigeria and indeed the world are done based on relationships and networks. Who you know. So do be very conscious of building that. And, and I think people always think, okay, I have to have Aliko in my network. No, no, you no, don't. no. You can build a network from people in your community. You can build True. it from people in your extended community. True. But it's just about investing in relationships that might come to help you as you go on in building the business, right? And I'll tell you this, right? Um, and, and this works for me in, in my, my business, my, my brand and, and things. Try to find people that you know will be key to your future and do stuff for them for free. They will be in debt. Well, that's to you. careful because you know in Nigeria everybody always trying to get someone. To no, do no, no. I, I say you find the people, okay. identify them, and see that they're going to be useful in your future. Okay. Identify them in specific areas of your industry mm -hmm. and do stuff for them for free. It make sure that they are indebted to you. I've been calling on uh, recently. I've been calling on a few favors that the people cannot say no. Now that I've said it, now they probably heard me, but it, it's it it's true, and and they they do they don't see it like I'm I'm trying to burden them because they see that I, Tunji has done a couple of things for me for free, and he's mm -hmm. always given his time to me, so I need to give my time to him. So it's so it's important. It's a, two -way a lot of them will open some doors for you that you, you know, will never be able to open yourself in a couple of years. So you know, do that also. Yeah, and I also think do get some experience. So. 
what has really helped me is working for many years before I started my business. Not Key. only everything I learned in terms of the skills, the network, but that's also the discipline of what it's really like to be an employee. It helps you be so much better when you're on the other side mm -hmm. as an employer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the don'ts. The don'ts are like many. The first thing is always like, don't use company money for your own personal expenses. It is expenses. not your money. It is the company's money. I mean, that's the first thing, right? It yeah. is company yeah. money. So it is not company money. Is not your money for your gym, Tunji. It's not the money for your rapping studio wow. time. It's not the money for your she fancy blue back, right? suit. It's not for your blue suit. It's for the business. And we're joking about this, but many entrepreneurs always mix this thing. You see people starting to use the money to buy hair and floss and travel BA. No, what no, no, no. What even worries me most is the TGIF culture. You know, You're go so and posh. pop bottles. TGI, what is that? No, TGIF, the, the go to the club on Fridays, pop bottles oh, yeah. on company money. Or wear Gucci. We're all about that these days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's really the company money and any money that you get, either you're making it or you're, or you're fundraising for it, belongs to the company. So that's really key. And I think it's really key to develop a culture of reinvesting the money that the business makes back into the business. Business, if right? you have a passion for it, it'll be easy for you to do that. You know, you won't need to be told to do that. And then I think it's also important to make sure that you always have your legal uh, documents in place, especially when you're True. hiring people mm -hmm. and when you're starting to really look at, you know, contracts. Make sure that's always done in entrepreneurship, especially if you're going to be hiring family members, which I do not really recommend. It's not just family, you know, you know, um, intended spouses. Intended people, spouses, a know, girlfriend. Boyfriend also. Um, and even when you're working with someone and then you start to bring in, you know, sexual tension into the whole scenario. Wow, Tunji, you're really taking it there this episode. Yeah, but, you know, zip up. Keep keep away from it, you know. Guys, ladies, you know, yes, let's keep it professional, you know. You, you heard know. it first from Tunji. Yes. Uh, so with entrepreneurship, I think the most important thing is really you want to keep focus. You don't want to get distracted by other outside you know? external factors, as I would put them. External um, and factors. And also just making sure that you always, ha you know, you like you just lead with integrity. I think that's really the most important. It's important, right? Because that will always, you know, speak for you wherever you go to. So do let us know what you think about uh, with, um, entrepreneurship, how you've been doing and how it's been working for you, what your tips have been, um, or what your success stories have been. Also your failures too. That I'm particularly interested to. I'd like to know about your failures and how you've been able to handle them. But you can also engage with me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, uh, at Tunji Andrews, and also you can... You can reach me at Honey Ogundei on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. I'd love to hear your entrepreneurship stories. And do not forget to uh, use the hashtag Analyze This, and you can also follow the handle at TV. Till next time, guys. Stay good. <laughs>